go to Eternal Library and learn. <laughs> Praise God. Listen, we are in such a time and season right now. Everybody needs to get out and get out and vote. Vote for the right thing. There's only one right vote. Everything else is wrong. Amen. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the way it is. You're either promoting Satan's kingdom or God's kingdom, one or the other. Although many people that are promoting Satan's kingdom still think they're promoting God's kingdom, but they're, they're deceived. Would you turn to Psalm 67? Hallelujah. If you haven't received one of our newsletters, you can go to Eternal Library and click on it says newsletter. We put them up there. <laughs> We'd like to keep people updated. We don't send them out every month, sometimes. Sometimes every other month. Again, we are in such a time and season where there's such a battle that, and we've talked about compromise already. And uh, the Holy Spirit brought something to me. And he said one of the problems that's happening is not only the compromise, it's the area where people are not making sure decisions. And, you know, it doesn't matter what your decisions hit you've made in the past. Amen? We are not talking about past decisions. These are new decisions now. I mean, you know, we are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Every moment becomes brand new. If you're feeding from the new and you're feeding the new, you will always be connected and step into the new all the time. But what the enemy likes to do is keep you connected to your past. Especially when there's offense or whatever it may be. He always reminds you of your past or what somebody else has done with to you or this or that. But that's the ploy of the enemy to bring you to the past and bring you to your past decisions. Why? So he can open the door again and contaminate your soul and eventually contaminate your heart. So in this, the Holy Spirit had mentioned to me this morning, he said, listen, they, my people need to, need to make a sure decision. When we're making a decision, it needs to be sure. And Psalm 67, would you go there with me, please? Let's speak it. God, be merciful to us. Bless us and cause your face to shine upon us that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you and let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you will judge the people righteously and govern the nations on the earth. This is where we are headed right now. This is what the battle is over. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth will what? Yield its increase. When? When, when all the peoples praise him. Then the earth will yield its increase. And God, our God, shall what? Bless us. So does blessing come out of praise? Yeah. Yes. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and, the, and all the ends of the earth shall what? Fear him. Listen, he says, all his ways will be known by us and through us. Why? Because we will carry his presence by worship and praise. We will have favor because we carry salvation. So you and I not only carry the presence of God, we carry the truth of God, we carry the salvation of God, and we carry his favor. And people will see it in hope that the people will not only choose to praise God because they will see us, but only when praise and glory to his name can there be increases. Everybody get that? That's only when it can come. God rewards us by obedience, but you can't even be obedient without the presence of God. It's impossible. 
So we see here, and he says, then increase and reverence will spread. Increase and reverence will spread, because that's the fear of the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect. See, but there's got a place where we hope that people will choose to praise him. Choose. That's a choice. Every one of us has a free will. We can't allow the enemy to manipulate our free will. We must make a sure decision. So we choose to praise him. We make a sure decision in our life that whatever we do, glory will go to his name, no matter what it is. Now, there are things that lead to a sure decision. Would you go to Exodus 35? Again, we are not talking about decisions we've made in the past. It's done. Amen. You can't do nothing about it. Amen? It's the decisions that we are making from this point on Amen. that they must be sure. So many times people make a decision, we call them emotional decisions because something occurred in their life. And emotional decisions have a tendency to cause people to want to run. And that's what the enemy loves to do, get you out of position and make you think that you can start brand new over somewhere else or some other place or some other job or whatever it is. When God says, I can make it new right where you're at. I can make it brand new right where you're at. Amen. Exodus 35. That's what he wants us to do is get connected to the new. And verse 20. Let's speak it together. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing. And they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting for all its service and for the holy garment. So here it was. Moses spoke to him about building the tabernacle. He was getting everyone to promote and dedicate themselves to assist in building the house of God. And so as he spoke to them, he said, look, we're going to need this, 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 and this. Whatever you can bring in, whatever you can do, do it. Make a sure decision that you're willing to promote this house of holiness, house of righteousness, house of truth, the house of the presence of God. And so they all agreed because their hearts were stirred to promote, to do something that was righteous, that was holy, and that was good. And everyone has a free will. Verse 22, and they came, both men and women, and as many as had a willing heart and brought earrings, nose rings, rings and necklaces, all jewelry of gold, that is, every man who made an offering of gold to the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, goats hair, red skins of rams, badger skins, they brought them. Everyone who offered an offering of silver or bronze brought the Lord's offering. And everyone with whom was found acacia wood for any work of service brought it. All women who were gifted artisans spun yarn with their hands and brought what they had spun of blue, purple, and scarlet and fine linen. All the women whose hearts stirred with wisdom spun yarn of goat's hair. The rulers brought onyx stones and the stones to be set in the ephod and the breastplate and spices and oil for the light for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord. All the men, women, whose hearts were willing to bring material for all kinds of work, which the Lord, by the hand of Moses, had commanded to be done. All of this happened, and they did it with a sure decision because they made a free will choice. Does everybody get it? Their hearts were stirred. They were touched.
to use their free will. How many of y'all know God touches your heart to influence your choice? So their hearts were touched to use their free will for something good, pure, and holy, to make a sure decision to see it through until it was completed. See, they knew what they were offering. They were bringing gold, whether it be an earring or whatever, jewelry, but they were going to melt it all to use in the tabernacle. It was going, that was the end result. Everyone knew what the end result was. But the one thing is, is that when it says that they, God touched their hearts because they're, they're pure heart, they got a pure heart. It was for something to do for God. Listen, a pure heart is a pure motive. A pure motive will promote a pure choice. And where there is a pure choice, there is a sure decision. Pure. Pure. So that means you and I, our, our choices must always be connected to the presence of God. That's why David always says, I always set the Lord before me. Why? Because he wanted to make sure that every decision he made was going to be right in front of the eyes of God. If we're not putting the Lord in front of us when we are making decisions, it says acknowledge him in all of his ways, right? Then we may make a decision that's presumptuous. It may not be a sure decision. It will be called an a unstable decision decision. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Now, again, a pure heart is a pure motive. Where there's a pure heart, there's pure motives. Where there's a pure motive, there's a pure choice. Where there's a pure choice, there's a sure decision. But much and many have neglected the free will, their free will. They've allowed the enemy to manipulate their free will to make unstable decisions. Again, a pure decision is a sure decision. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. When Jesus came into this world to set a new covenant, he made a sure decision. All the way to the cross. He saw it all the way through. His decisions were not unstable. Because he came with a pure heart, a pure motive, and always had a pure decision. And every pure decision will have a true decision. Sing it all the way through. Other than that, you will have an unstable decision. So there's either one decision or the other. One is unstable, the other one is stable because it's sure. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. When you made a vow, you made a sure decision. Now you must fulfill it. Many people fall into, start off with a sure decision and fall into an unstable decision. In verse 21, is everybody there? Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter decisions, hello, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Or every, why? Because he's making sure decisions now. Flee also youthful look youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure. pure heart. Why? Because if they have a pure heart, is their motive going to be pure? Is their decision going to be pure? Yeah, so you got to be careful who, who and what you associate with. Verse 23. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, 
correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Why? Because their unstable decision created a snare. Now they're doing the will of the devil instead of the willing will of God. He said, listen, if you'll cleanse from our past unstable decisions and associations with everything and everyone that has a, and re, get reconnected with everyone and everything that has a pure heart, a pure motive, and a pure decision, you will make sure decisions backed by a pure motive. Many neglect their liberty, their freedom, or what we call free will, not recognizing the motive or the intent of the heart. And the outcome is always getting snared by the enemy. Amen? They get snared by the enemy because of unstable decisions. In Galatians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7. You know, nothing is impossible with the Lord. Amen. He can turn everything and do anything. The problem is many people just don't allow him to. They're not willing to wait. The world is in a rush. We're not bound by space and time. Jesus can catch everything up in one second. Amen? That's all it takes is some mustard seed. Just a little bit of faith can change everything. But of course, faith without works faith without a, the right decision is no good. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, 7. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you, you shall bear his judgment whoever he is. And, and I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to what? Liberty or freedom. Only do not use it as an opportunity for the flesh, but through the serve, but through love serve one Another, for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware, lest you become consumed by one another. What does he say? Then I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So again, here we are. Ran well until misuse of free will. Misuse of free will. Unstable decisions. Choices that promote the flesh of evil snare the soul. Not a soul has been compromised, and the result is deception and bondage. You know, one of the things that people begin to do is harbor things in their heart. They harbor bitterness, unforgiveness. They harbor shame, guilt, condemnation. Harboring those things causes more problems. You cannot make a sure decision when you still harbor them. That's why the Lord says, forgive and move on. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. God rejects the proud, but he gives a way out <laughs> to the humble. Philippians, or Philippians chapter 4. Is everybody okay? Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for everything. Mm -hmm. 
No? Okay. Be anxious for what? Nothing. 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 But in everything by what? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all your figuring that out, will guide your hearts and your minds so you don't make unstable decisions. Amen? Let me share with you that. Uh, in other words, he's telling us to set our focus on truth. Look at the next verses. Finally, brethren, whatever things are what? True. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That means focus on these things. The things which you've learned and received and heard and saw me, these do, and the God of peace will be what? With you. In other words, set our focus on the truth, God-fearing, pure agendas, pure associations. Set our focus on decisions of others. Listen, you don't want to associate with people that are, that are associating and, and making unstable decisions. You want to hang out with people that have a pure heart. Why? Because then they're going to motivate be pure. You can trust them. But people who can't make a sure decision that are unstable, you can't trust. I don't care who they are. Whether they're family, not family, it doesn't matter. So you must always be prepared because you never know when they will portray or betray you. Set your focus on things that are true, God-fearing, pure agendas, pure associations, decisions of others, and your own. Anxiousness, decisions, are unstable decisions. Anxious decisions are unstable decisions. The word says, wait on the Lord. Amen? Again, God can start things new wherever you are. Hebrews 12. Verse 3. Glory. Let's speak it together. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to his sons and daughters. Now, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loved, he what? He chases and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, correction, Everyone say correction, correction is not rejection. not rejection. It's protection. People have a tendency to get offended when they're corrected because the first thing that comes to their mind, they're being rejected. Hallelujah. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? Amen? Remember, correction is not rejection. It's protection. The whole thing is whether a person is willing to receive it or not. But if you're still fighting for your life, you can't. You will justify every correction. You will try to reflect it off of something else. Well, this, well, that, you know, well, well, I know this, well, you know, it doesn't matter. God is trying to bring, when God brings correction, he tries to bring it new. He tries, why is he trying to bring correction? To bring us into a new. He tries to bring us into a new. But so many times people are still, even when correction comes, they're still holding on to the old. And they can't get put into the new. 
If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not correct? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not a son. So God is going to correct every single one of us. Nobody gets away with it. Nobody escapes it. He will correct you. And he'll cause things to delay. He'll, there's things he'll cause you to do that you just don't like. But anyways. <laughs> Verse 9. Furthermore, he's going to cause us to get humble. He's going to give you the recipe for humble pie. <laughs> and you can put all the toppings on it you want. <laughs> Furthermore, we have had uh, uh, human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us and seem best to them, but he for our profit, hello, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness. If it's not yielding the fruit of righteousness, the person did not receive the true correction. If it's still promoting pride, he's rejected correction. Of those who have been trained by it, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Now, unstable decisions result in correction, not rejection. Amen? It is for protection. We make decisions and harbor things like for unforgiveness and offense, bitterness, prejudice, allowing the enemy to access our soul. Now making emotional decisions or unstable decisions because the heart is contaminated. Amen? <laughs> From the first unstable decision. <laughs> Again, we want to be able to be protected. The only way that we can come out of these things is through repentance, true repentance. And then allow God to show us the true correction and not reject his correction, knowing that he's doing it for our good. Amen? And then the next thing you know, a uh, more correct decision is made to undo the entanglements from the unstable corrections and uh, uh, unstable decisions that we've made. Is everybody okay? Cool. Colossians 3. You know, just because what, even though we've made decisions in the past, we're still being untangled from those decisions, aren't we? Amen? And God wants to untangle us from all of this stuff. Colossians 3, verse 1. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay connected. If then, verse 1, if you, then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. When he says seek, it means focus. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on those things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which we ourselves once walked when we lived in them. But 
But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man. Well, if you're harboring stuff, can you put on the new man? No. And have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is in all, uh, is all and in all. You know, one of the things also in our sure decision making is having an attitude of gratitude also. Remember where you've came from. Remember the things, that, what God has done for you. Amen? Be grateful of what you have. Just look around your room. Just look around anywhere and thank him. You know, when the enemy comes with oppression and all that, what's he trying to do? Oppression causes people to make unstable decisions. Anxious causes people to make unstable decisions. Offense causes people to make unstable decisions. Fear causes people to make unstable decisions. But be grateful. Be grateful what you have. Be grateful you have hot water. Be grateful you have clothes. Just be grateful. Start thanking God about everything. Let me tell you, the other night, uh, when I, I tweaked my back, so I was hurting for a few days. And so uh, I was uh, laying on, I was on the couch, and I just kept, you know, decreeing my freedom and healing. And next thing I know, this buzz comes to my ear. And usually if this bug comes to your ear, you just rebuke it and tell it to go. To me, it's always just a demon coming up and trying to speak to you. And next thing I know, I went deaf. I mean, I'm thinking, this is my imagination. Now this can't be happening. And, uh, and, and, and so I put my finger in my one ear, and I could not hear the TV. I'm thinking, my God, I'm deaf in one ear. I said, no way. <laughs> I started fighting and battling. I'm like, the devil, I'm not giving you place here. No way. And uh, so I, I, was, I was a little freaked out. <laughs> and I, uh, you know, my wife made some suggestions. Maybe it was because when we were, where we were at in water, this, that, whatever. Something occurred. I don't know. So anyways, I, she got some uh, garlic drops and put it in my ear. It was still free. I couldn't, hear, I couldn't have TV on. I couldn't have music. I couldn't hear. I didn't want anything because it was so bad. It was hurting my head. And the next day, I had to bring the car to a car show, and I knew that they always played the music, like, you know, secular music there and whatever, and it's always loud and ridiculous. And so uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, and my ear felt better. And uh, so I drove the car to the uh, car show, and as I was pulling in, they parked me right in front of the, the music. I'm thinking, gosh, Lord, really? <laughs> and so they usually have it blasting, and they didn't have it blasting this time. And, it, and the thing I realized was I could hear. So I said to the Lord, I said, thank you so much for allowing me to hear, even though it's secular music, <laughs> but I want to thank you and protect me now. Thank you for allowing me to hear again. Yeah. So I was just... You know, you don't realize until something happens that how grateful you are to have something, you know, how grateful you are. And that's the area where we need to be focusing on being grateful. Quit looking at what you don't have or what you've lost. Look at what you have and what God can do. Make a, de a sure decision that he's faithful to complete what he started. Make the sure decision that his word is true and he will not fail you. Make the decision and humble yourself and accept what he says. Accept the correction and don't look at it as rejection. 
Why? It's nothing but protection. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to James 3. Set your mind, your thoughts, your motive, your attitude, your heart, and decisions according to God's way and not our own. James 3. Again, I, I want to emphasize that we are in a time of such strong influence, such strong demonic influence. James 3, verse 13. You know, I, again, so many times, remember the good things God has done for you, not the good things you did. Remember the good things God has done, not the good things you did. Amen? Well, I was this. Well, I was that. Forget who you were back then. That doesn't stink in me nothing now. It's who you are now. See, people still relying on their old identity and not willing to accept a new one. We need to get cleansed from our old identity, get it removed, cut loose, and receive our new identity and who we are. But if you're still holding on to the past and anything whatsoever, your successes, even those will bring you to your past. How great you were, all those will bring you to your past. The great things you did, it doesn't matter. What you built, it doesn't matter. It still brings you to your past if you want to step into the new. Amen? Amen. James 3, 13. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. So will bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts promote Sure decisions are unstable. Unstable. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Is first what? Pure. Pure. Does everybody see that? Pure. Why? Because where there's a pure heart, there's a pure motive. Where there's a pure motive, there's a pure decision. Where there's a pure decision, there's a sure decision. So this wisdom from above is pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. That means you're turning over your will. Full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Works of meekness of wisdom, sure decision. Again, bitter envy, self-seeking in the hearts. <laughs> it always will cause an unstable decision. The result is an unstable decision bringing delay. Bringing delay. Bringing correction, again, not rejection. But when there is the correct, sure decision, God wants to bring us to a place of restoration, renewing. He wants to remend. He wants to re reconnect us to the pure heart, pure motive, and pure decisions so that we make sure decisions. He's a God of mercy and grace. Amen. And he's faithful all the way to the end. 2 Peter chapter 1. Oh, happy days. Sure decisions. Now, one of the things we want to confirm our decisions, our decision-making. 
We confirm it, of course, by aligning ourselves with the Word of God. We confirm it by the will of God. Now, the will of God has God's timing in it. Sometimes a decision is made out of God's timing. And when it's made out of God's timing, it becomes an unstable decision. Whether it's anxious or whatever, or fear motivated. Again, we want to confirm the decisions. There will also be a witness within you that will confirm the decision. There will be a peace. Now be careful of false peace. Because all of a sudden that will go away. We confirm it by not only the witness within us, but the voice of the Lord. He can confirm something to us by dreams and visions. Amen. He can confirm it to us by getting counsel. You know, many people, when, especially when they're making big decisions, man, they need to get counsel and get confirmation. God will even visit someone else and say, look, man, I had a dream about this. If you're asking him, Lord, confirm this decision I'm about to make. Am I supposed to purchase this car, purchase this house, do this, do that? Conf get it confirmed. Get counsel from the office where you're fellowshipping. Get counsel. Something will occur. But, of course, sometimes people are not willing to get counsel because they know what the answer is. <laughs> so they just make that unstable decision no matter what. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine, divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, to the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue and knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will never, never, neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election what? Sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A sure decision, make, a, make your call and election sure with a pure heart, pure motive, pure decisions, and you will never stumble. 2 Corinthians 4. You sure want to make a sure decision when you marry somebody, right? <laughs> or a snap. <laughs> well, we're sure then. <laughs> yes. That car, that same car you bought was a sure decision then. Whatever it is, listen, your decisions in the past are over. Amen. It doesn't matter anymore. Step in the new. Amen. Don't let the enemy convince you to go back to those old great decisions we've made. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. We are hard pressed. We are still hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Pers persecuted, but not forsaken. <laughs> Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying 
in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body. So the death is working in us and life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Don't lose heart. Make a sure decision not to lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day, so things aren't going your way. Make a sure decision that God is faithful. Make a sure decision that you're holding on to that faith and that connection and the promises. Make that decision. Don't waver that decision to become an unstable decision. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, though it sometimes seems forever, is working for us. Make that decision that it is a moment and it's coming to an end. <laughs> It's working for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen or felt, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary and the things which are not seen are eternal. Sure decision to believe, speak, pray, and follow. Amen? Allowing the pure power of Christ in us to lead us and direct us then he can release his will in us and through us by a sure decision. You made a sure decision when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yeah. Although some people made an unstable one. They didn't know what the heck was happening. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll try. All right, well, try is to start. We need to come out of trying and start doing. Amen? Luke 9. Well, I'll just try this. That ain't going to work. Can you imagine if Jesus tried to go to the cross? <laughs> he would have never made it. He made a sure decision to do it and get it done. Luke 9. Verse 23. Then Jesus said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. There's a sure decision <laughs> in every decision. <laughs> That's got to be the first decision. <laughs> and take up his cross daily, fight and follow, and follow him. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's house and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste the pangs of death till they see the kingdom of God. Sure decision to deny ourselves. Reject rejection. Amen. You know, we need to reject rejection. <laughs> and the voice of the stranger and fight and follow all the way home. Those of sure decisions will not taste the pangs of death. Praise God. Remember, confirm your decision. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We want to make sure decisions. Maintain our hearts to be pure, our motives to be pure, and our decisions to be pure. Help us in every area. Lord, let the word of God that has been released, a prophetic word, prepare us today 
for all future decisions that need to be made. Let them be sure decisions directed by your hand, your presence, and your will in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.